Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the class today. Thank you so much for joining me. If you guys don't know me already, my name is Britt. I'm going to be your coach today. I've been lifting kettlebells and coaching kettlebells for about 10 years, and I was a competitive kettlebell sport athlete for six of those. In the last several years, I kind of reignited my passion for kettlebells after burning myself out by discovering kettlebell partner passing and kettlebell solo. Kettlebell solo is the kettlebell training I'm going to take you through today. So kettlebell solo is an excellent way to build the foundations for kettlebell lifting, build your strength, build your fitness, and enhance your body awareness. It's open to all levels. It's not very technical, so anybody can do it. Beginners can do it. And that being said, there's also a lot of things that are different from conventional kettlebell programs. So it's also great for seasoned kettlebell athletes. And if you're ever interested in trying kettlebell partner passing, kettlebell solo is the way that you would prepare your body to send and receive a kettlebell. So for our class today, the intention is it's, it's more of a slow strength class. No high intensity, you're gonna take your time. Something that I've discovered through doing this program is how important it is to focus on quality over quantity. So take your time with all the movements. We're not gonna rush. We're gonna make sure that we understand each movement and really feel our body and get in tune with our body while we're doing them. And I wanna remind you to listen to your body while you're taking the class today. Unfortunately, I can't see you and see exactly what you're doing. So I'm gonna need you to really listen to yourself and check in, you know? As I recommended for this class, you use a 10 to 30 pound kettlebell. I recommend start light. You can always go heavier later and you'll see during the class why you don't need much more than a light bell to really feel the effects of the exercises. Also, when I'm, I'm doing the exercises, for most of them, I'm gonna do 10 reps. Now, you are free to do a lower amount of reps if that's where you're at today. Please use your discretion if 10 feels like way too many. Just stop wherever you're at. You can rest until I finish the rest of the set. And go slow, go at your own pace. At a few times during the class, I'm gonna tell you to match my tempo. Do that if you can. If it's too challenging, feel free to go at the tempo that feels right for you. And of course, rest as needed. So if you need more rest than is being given with the pace of the class, please feel free to rest until you're ready to jump back in. So before we go into the warm up, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about stances. Now, stances are important for kettlebell solo because we want to train the body through a range of different stances. In oftentimes you'll see with kettlebell training or strength training that we don't come out of this position much. We call this our neutral square position. Now, it's great to do exercises in this position. That being said, you'll get a a more well-rounded strength if you train in a variety of stances. So we're going to review those stances because they're going to be important today and even more so as we move forward into these weekly classes. So what I'd like you to do is please follow along with me as we walk through the different stances. You by no means need to memorize them. I will remind you of what each stance is for each exercise. So first, you're going to step your feet right next to one another. This is called our narrow square stance. So feet are together, legs are pressed together. So go ahead and try that one out, narrow square. Then we've got neutral square. As I mentioned before, this is gonna be feet about hip width apart. And this is gonna be a stance most of us are pretty familiar with. And we'll be using it a lot today for starting out. Then we've got our wide square stance. So wider than hip width. Okay, and so each of the square stances, the feet are just in line, right? So we've got narrow, neutral, wide. Then we have our stagger stances. So for stagger stances, one foot is going to be out in front of the other. So the first stagger stance I'd like you to try is um, narrow short. So from that narrow square stance we did before, I'm just going to take one step forward. So my heel and toe are in line here, okay, right next to each other. This is going to be our narrow short. So we've got three lengths we're going to use. Short, then our next one will be mid. So that would be one additional step forward. That would be narrow mid. Let me turn this way so you can see that. 
So narrow mid, and then our last one here would be narrow long. So I would take one more step forward, so about three foot lengths forward. This would be our narrow long stagger stance. So then you can do that same stance with the other leg forward, and we have um, those additional stagger stances from neutral, so neutral short, neutral mid, neutral long, and then the same with our wide short, wide, mid, wide, long. Okay, so we won't be using all those stances today by any means. We're mostly gonna be using square stances and there will be a few stagger stances sprinkled in. So just keep those in the back of your mind and I'll remind you about them later throughout the class. Okay, for our warm up, we're gonna get started um, with some pelvic tilts. So you, this is something you may have done in a mobility class before, but this is an excellent way to um, warm up your back and your uh, core and to just prep yourself to find a neutral position with your pelvis. So we're going to start in narrow square stance. So remember that's feet pressed together. I'm going to place your hands on your hips. You're going to take a slight bend in the knees and you're going to think of tilting your pelvis back and forth. So I'm going to think of lifting up the back of my pelvis using a little bit of my lower back here to lift it. And then I'm going to tuck under and I'm going to think about pulling my lower abs in or pulling my belly button in in order to tuck under. So you're going to alternate between these two. We're going to do about 10 reps here and try to make the movement as smooth as you can. We want to avoid really arching the lower back and make, making these upper or mid back muscles work. We want to try to just tilt the pelvis and use the very lower part of the lower back. Okay, so go ahead and do about four more here. One, tuck under. Two. Three. Four, excellent. Our second warm up exercise is gonna be a handcuff. So for this one, you have a few options. More difficult is palms pressed together, easier, palms opened, okay? Um, easier to keep the elbows bent, more difficult to straighten out. And you can do that palms open or palms pressed, okay? So you're gonna choose a variation, maybe you're doing um, palms pressed, but bent arms here. And just think about opening up through the shoulders, pulling those shoulders back, squeezing the shoulder blades together. Okay, as you hold that handcuff position, I'd like you to just tuck your chin to your chest and then look up to the ceiling. Okay, think about breathing in and out through your nose here. Kind of getting a nice little bang for your buck, opening up your shoulders and working through the neck. Okay, come back to center now. I'd like you to turn and look over your right shoulder. Turn, look over your left while maintaining that squeeze between your shoulder blades. Okay, and then go ahead and release the arms. We're going to move into a hip hinge next. So still narrow square position, feet together. A little bend in the knees here. You're going to slide your hands down your legs going into a hip hinge. So if you're familiar with deadlifting, it's similar action. We're just doing it without our kettlebell and taking your time nice and slow. When you take your time here, you have more of a chance to feel those glutes starting to activate and warm up. And that's gonna help us when we do our deadlifts later on in the class. Okay, so let's do five more reps. Generally, we'll just keep it simple and do 10 reps of most of our exercises today. And as I mentioned to you, you can feel free to adjust or modify that depending on how you're feeling during the class. Okay, you got two more. And last one. Good. Now we're going to go into some squats. So 
Still maintaining narrow square, so feet pressed together. On this one, don't worry about going super low on your squat. Just go ahead and find whatever depth works for you because our legs are pressed together, feet are pressed together. It's gonna to be a little bit more challenging to get low on that squat. So just go to whatever depth feels comfortable for you. I like to put my arms out just for a little bit of extra balance. And really reaching your hips back, sinking that weight into your heels. Yeah, we got five more here. If squatting is challenging for you, you can always sit, uh, find a chair or couch, whatever you got, box, and you can sit down or tap your butt to that box. Okay, we got one more. Awesome. Okay, we'll throw in a little bit of work for the ankles now to warm those guys up. So go ahead and stand on your left leg. If you need to, you can hold on to a wall or something else you got for balance, or if you want to practice your balance, don't hold on to anything. So stand on that left leg, lift your right, nice and slow. You're going to trace a circle with your ankle. Take your time. The slower you go, the more you can kind of feel it out into each corner of that circle because circles have corners. In reverse direction. As I was practicing filming this class yesterday, I was saying it'd be nice to have a laugh reel because otherwise I don't know whether any of my jokes are gonna work or not. Good, go ahead and switch sides. Same thing on that other side. Take your time, nice and slow. A warm up is a perfect opportunity for you to just check in with your body and see how things are feeling today. In reverse direction. Good way to notice if something is feeling funky in any of these different positions, something you can be mindful of when you're going through the rest of the workout. Good. Okay, so we're gonna go back through our warm up two more times. We're gonna visit our different stand, our different square stances. So we did our first one all in narrow. Now we're gonna do our second one all in neutral, and then we'll do our third one all in wide. So go ahead and find your neutral square, hip width apart, and we're gonna do our pelvic tilt. So take your hands to your hips, slight bend in the knees, and tilting that pelvis back and forth. Again, this one's super important because it's gonna help you find the neutral position for your pelvis. When we're lifting, for example, if we're doing a deadlift, we don't wanna to be too exaggerated either in this position or this tucked under position. We wanna kind of find our, our neutral, and that's gonna help us as we work through the different ranges of motion here and just allow you to have better control of your pelvis and the muscles around your pelvis as you're learning to coordinate and strengthen them with the pelvic tilt. Okay, you got three more. As you'll see, this is also a great exercise to use in our cool down to just relieve any back tension that you may experience at times from lifting. Good way to just reset your body at the very end of class. Good, okay, we're gonna do our handcuff. Again, you can find bent arm or straight arm, whatever works for you. And this time I'd like you to drop your right ear to your right shoulder, slowly coming through the center, left ear down, breathing in and out through the nose. Nice and slow. Don't feel like you need to force the range of motion here. Just go to wherever you're comfortable. Excellent. Okay, hip hinge. So neutral square, a little bit in the knees, take your time, slide it down. On these hip hinges, just like on our deadlifts, as far as the depth goes, we're going to go to shoulders at or above hip level. No need to go any lower than that. 
And generally we wanna keep our back nice and flat. It's gonna prevent us from overworking that low back and help us really place most of that weight into your hips and glutes. And as you do this exercise, just like if you're doing a deadlift, I want you to imagine that you could push your feet outward, okay, without moving them. And when you do that action that you're pushing outward, you're gonna feel more of an activation on your hips and your glute muscles. Okay, we got three more here. Pushing outward with those feet. Nice and slow on the way up. And last one. Good, we'll go right to our squats from here. So neutral square squat. Find whatever depth works for you. Okay, we're gonna do about 10 reps. So you could always just go about a quarter squat here. That's great if that's where your range of motion at. If you wanna go more to a half squat, awesome. Okay, you can choose to come down to parallel, make it a little bit more challenging. If you have really good range of motion, you can try to come down nice and low, get as close to the ground as you can, and then come up from there. Your choice. And it may change each time that you're doing your training. You might have a little more range of motion one day than the other. Five more here, reaching your butt back. Five. Four, I encourage you to take your time as you're doing this exercise. Three, you're gonna get more out of the exercise when you really take your time, make your muscles stay under that tension a little bit longer. Last one. Good, for ankle mobility, the second round, I'd like you to just come up onto your toes, nice and high, and slowly return back down to the ground. So just get a little bit of foot strength here, trying to come up as high onto the balls of your feet as you can. Nice and slow back down. Again, you can feel free to place your hand on the wall or on a chair or something next to you. If the balance is a little bit difficult for you, that's four, we're gonna go to 10. Five. Six. Seven, nice and slow down. Eight. Nine. Last one. 10. Okay, last round through our warm up. Let's go wide square. So wider than hip width apart. Starting with that pelvic tilt. A little bend in the knees. Take your time. Think of firing up that low back and then activate those low abs. Pull the lower abdomen in and try to make it smooth. Three. I always like to make the joke that this one's awkward when you're doing it in a group. And you should try not to make eye contact with anyone while you're doing it. But luckily you guys are probably at home doing it alone so no one will see you. That's six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Find your handcuff position, staying in that wide stance. Let's tuck the chin down to the chest. Roll the chin to your right shoulder. Drop your right ear, coming back and around. Left ear down, chin to the chest, and reverse. Nice, slow circles here again. Don't strain on that range of motion. Just go to wherever feels comfortable for you. Good, and relax. We'll go into that hip hinge. Nice wide position, a little bend in the knees. 
sinking your hips back. Okay, you can go hands on the front of your thighs or hands on your hips, whatever feels comfortable for you. Two, really trying to feel those glutes active the whole time when you're pushing your butt back and when you're pushing into the ground to stand up. Three. Four, so you can keep your neck in line with your spine, so looking down at the ground here, and then following that as you come up. Five, instead of craning your neck here, tuck that chin. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine, last one. Ten. Okay, for our squats and our wide stance, you have two options. You can kind of turn your toes outward or you can have them pointed forward. Whatever position you take with your feet is fine. Just make sure your knees track your toes. So if your toes are pointed forward, your knees are going to point forward. If your toes are pointed out, your knees are going to go outward. So either one is perfectly fine. Go ahead and do whichever one feels the most comfortable for you today. We're going to get our 10 reps here. Again, you choose your depth, what other, whatever depth feels good for you this morning. Three, four, five, Similar to your deadlift, you can think of kind of pushing your feet outward, six, and that's going to help you activate those glute muscles a little bit better. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. All right, we're gonna cap our warm up there. Hopefully you guys are feeling a little bit warm now. We're gonna move into our first set with our kettlebell. So grab your kettlebell. As I mentioned before, it should be 10 to 30 pounds. Um, I'm using a six kilogram kettlebell, it's about 14 pounds. So I'm gonna keep it pretty light for a couple of reasons. Um, I'm gonna be talking while I'm doing it, which is an extra uh, addition of work. And because you can get a great workout even with a 15 pound kettlebell. It's more about the intention and the quality of effort you put in than it is about using a heavy weight. So for our first set, we're going to be doing three different exercises. A two hand tempo deadlift, a thigh rainbow, and a handoff drill. So I'll walk you through each of these as we go. We're going to start off with our two hand deadlift. So if you're familiar with a deadlift, it's going to be um, pretty self-explanatory. If you're not, we're going to be using our legs to, to go from our hinge position to pick up our kettlebell. Now, the difference here between regular deadlift and what we're doing with tempo is we're going to be going really nice and slow throughout the full movement. So I want you to try to stay with me. Try not to go any faster than I go. And you're going to feel that that time under tension is going to make the exercise a whole lot harder. So we're going to do 10 reps. Go ahead and start with that kettlebell between your feet. Reach down, grab the handle, and then you're going to push into the floor as you stand up, moving nice and slow. That's one. As you come down, again, going really nice and slow, fighting gravity, not letting it pull us down. And slow, especially out of the very bottom. Two. And we're trying to get our muscles to work as much as we can with this nice slow pace. Three. Sinking the hips back nice and slow, pushing outward with those feet. Nice and slow out of the bottom. Again, try not to go any faster than me. That's four. You can go slower if you want to. Five. You're going to see pretty soon why we're just using a light kettlebell. This exercise is going to get challenging pretty quick. 
if you're really activating everything and moving nice and slow. That was six. Seven. Ideally, we're feeling this mostly in your glutes and your hamstrings. If you're feeling it a lot in your lower back, eight. Bend your knees a little bit more as you go down. So you take some of that pressure off of your low back and place it into your hips. Nine, last one. Slow, 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 slow. 10, excellent, nice and slow. Set that kettlebell down to the ground. Okay, second exercise is gonna be the thigh rainbow. So for this one, we're gonna be using a neutral long stagger. So from our um, neutral uh, width, we're gonna be stepping back about three foot lengths behind us, okay? And then we're gonna be coming down into like a kind of half lunge position. Okay, so let me show you the exercise. We're gonna be going from that neutral long position. I'm gonna come down, grab my bell. I'm gonna keep my legs in the same position and I'm just gonna be making a rainbow shape up and over my thigh. Okay, so you guys are gonna join me now. We're gonna do 10 reps. Up and back is one. Again, if you need to stop before the 10 reps, that's okay, stop wherever you need to. Okay, so get set up, neutral, long. Come on down, grab your bell, ready, set, go. Try to move nice and slow with the arms. Almost like we're doing a nice slow tempo here as well. That's one. Two. And this is where you see why you don't need a heavy bell. Because this is going to get challenging no matter what weight you're using. Three. Four. Five. If you need to stop, feel free to stop and rest there. Six. Seven. Eight, if you're still with me, hang in there, we're almost done. Nine. And 10, bell down, shake it out. Well, the lovely thing about staggers, we did one side, now we're gonna do the other side. So other leg is gonna be forward, same thing. So find your neutral, long, bell inside the foot. Let's go right into that other side. Come on down, grab your bell. Ready, set, and go. Up and over is one, straightening that arm at the bottom. Obviously, the lower you sink into legs, the more challenging. Two. Three. And these never really get easier. Four, just warning you now. Five. Six, nice work you guys, hang in there. Seven, eight, nine, last one, 10. Nice work, shake it out. Whew. Okay, legs are burning from that one. Okay, our third exercise, we're gonna do a handoff, an A-turn handoff. So for this, we're gonna be in our narrow square position. I'll show you first and then we'll start together. So what you're gonna do is we'll go one, two, on three. I'm gonna switch it across. One, two. Okay, so that's gonna be our cadence there. And make sure that you're gripping the bell on the corner of the handle so that when you bring it across, you can easily just grab the other side to switch versus if your hand is in the center, it's 
it's going to be a little hard to grab onto it. All right, so go ahead and start with the bell on your side. We're going to do 10 reps, starting with one, two, three, switch it over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Excellent. Okay. Bell down. Feel free to grab a quick sip of water if you like. We're going to go through those three exercises one more time. Okay, so we're just going to do two rounds there. So we'll start with that two-hand tempo deadlift, move to our thigh rainbow, which is probably everyone's favorite exercise by now, and then we're going to move through handoffs for a second round. Okay, so get your bell ready. Second round through. So bell between those feet. Come on down. Push that floor away. Remember, nice and slow. Don't go any faster than me. If you can, try to keep this nice, slow cadence. That's one. Nice and slow on the way down. Push the floor away. For two, remember it's about the quality of the exercise you're doing, really putting your attention into it, feeling those legs stay under tension for longer, getting all those muscles to activate. Three. So I'm using a 15 pound bell, but I'm really feeling my whole leg working here. It's even shaking a little bit. Four. If you don't feel it, go a little slower. Push that floor away. That's five. Don't forget to breathe. Six. I really found a lot of benefit from going really slow on my deadlift and starting to feel my legs a lot more, getting a lot more strength and tone. Seven. Just by going slower, it is actually going to help you build better strength through that full range of motion. Eight. Last two. That's it. Nine. One more. And take that bell nice and slow to the ground. Okay, thigh rainbow, set number two. So any of my students that I've taught these uh, leg exercises like the thigh rainbows, it's immediately a favorite or dreaded exercise. Okay, neutral, long, so remember that's from that neutral square one to about three foot lengths back. Come on down, grab your bell. Ready, set, and go. Up and over. Try to keep those legs in that same static position. So we're just holding with the legs and then working those biceps a little bit as we move that bell over. Two. Three. Take your time. Feel the burn. Four. Five, use your discretion. If you need to rest, rest. Six. Seven. Eight, last two. Nine, hang in there. Last one, 10. Good work, shake it out. We got the other side to do. 
Find your neutral long stagger here. One, two, three. Come on down to your bell. You guys got this, last one. Ready, set, go. Up and over. One. Two. Three, if it's getting too challenging, you can always move up a little bit. Don't go as low. Four. Five. Match up whatever you did on the other side. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Almost done. Ten. Excellent job, you guys. Okay, exercise number three. Last time we did a A-turn handoff, which is in front of the body. This time we're going to do a U-turn handoff, so we're going to pass behind the body. Um, so I'm going to show you real quick. We'll go one, two, three, then switch behind the back. Okay, so remember if this one is a bit challenging for you to get behind the back, feel free to do that same A turn again from the first round. All right, here we go. Let's do this one together. We're gonna go one, two, three, pass behind, one, two, flip around so you can see, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Awesome work, you guys. Bells down. Again, grab a sip of water if you need it. We're going to go into our second round of exercises. So we're going to switch things up a little bit. We're still going to be doing our deadlifts, but this time we're going to go regular speed on our deadlift. So no tempo, just moving a little bit faster on that deadlift. Um, you can then compare and kind of compare and contrast the difference between the tempo and the regular speed. Then we're going to do thigh rainbows again. Don't worry, they're gonna be a little bit easier. We're gonna add a um, pulse onto our thigh rainbow. Okay, and that's gonna make it so you get a little relief from that bottom position. And then we're gonna do some full circles around the body handoffs. Okay, so again, we're gonna do two rounds through of each of those three exercises. So let's start off with that deadlift, bell between the feet. Okay, regular speed here. See if you can sync up with the pace that I'm doing. Ready, grab your bell and go. One, we're going to 10. Tap the floor. Two, see if you can still activate as much as you did. Three, on those tempo ones. We're just going a little faster. Four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten, bells down. Okay, so you'll probably notice it's a little bit easier when you go faster. Okay, we're gonna go thigh rainbows, this time with a pulse. So each time the bell comes up, you're straightening your legs and then you're coming back down as the bell goes down. So same stance, neutral, long, stagger. Bell to the inside of your front foot. Here we go. Ready, set, and go. Up and over. One, okay? Pulsing with that bell. Two, a little easier on the arms. Three, and the legs. Four. Five. 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Nice work. Looking forward to hearing your thoughts and which one you think is easier, the static or the pulse. Okay, other side, find that neutral long. Build to the inside of your front foot. Ready, set, and go. One. Two. Three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Nice work. Okay, third drill. We're going to do an around the body handoff in our narrow square. I'd like you to start with the kettlebell up here. You're going to grab hold of the handle and grab the ball with your other hand. Now let me demo for you real quick, then we'll start together. So you're going to drop the bell, switch it behind your back, and make a nice full circle. Then we'll bring it up and we'll push it back to reverse. We're going to do 10 reps in each direction. So go ahead and meet me here. Ready, set, and go. Around for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Bring it up. Meet me here. Ready, set, and go. Other direction. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Bring it up. Excellent. Bells down. Okay, we got one more round through. Deadlifts thigh rainbow with a pulse, and then our around the body handoff. And we're getting closer to the end of class here. We just got a few more things to get through before we do our cool down. So hang with me here. Let's go for this deadlift, regular speed. Ready, set, and go. One, two, Really sitting back into those hips. Three. Tap the floor. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine, ten, and bells down. All right, this is the last, last set of thigh rainbows, I promise. So what I do love about these leg exercises is they're a great way to build your leg strength, but there's very little technique required. So it's an excellent way to strengthen your legs with a kettlebell without needing to learn all the different little nuances of technique. Find your neutral long, grab your bell, ready, set, and go. Up and over. One, two, three. See if you can stay with my pace here. Try not to go too much faster. Four, five, you can rest when you need to. Six, seven, eight, nine, 
10. Nice work. Okay, other side. Let's finish these out. Neutral long. Grab your bell. Ready, set, and go. Up and over. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight, almost there. Nine, ten. Excellent work. Shake those legs out. One more set of your around the body handoff in that narrow square position. So grab your bell, bring it up. Ready, set, and go. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Bring it up and reverse in three, two, one, go. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Bring it up. Excellent. And bell down. Awesome job, you guys. You're doing great so far. We just got a few more minutes left. Now, I want to show you guys real quick one of the drills that we're going to be learning in future classes. So, obviously, today is just our first class, a little bit of an intro into the solo program. There's a lot more I have to share with you guys about it, a lot more exciting new moves for you guys to try. But one of the drills I like the most about kettlebell solo is it teaches you how to move with the kettlebell, how to step with the kettlebell in a way that I've never seen in any other programs before. So, what I'm going to show you is around the body handoff with a front step. Now, this is an awesome drill to teach you to um, move with the kettlebell or have the kettlebell help you move and be efficient with how you do that. So I'm going to show you guys and then have you give it a try. So you're going to start in your around the body handoff position. Okay, you're going to do a few reps of your handoff. Then as you pull the bell back towards you, you're going to step forward. Okay, then as the bell comes forward, you're going to step back. Okay, so here, step forward, pause there, as long as you need, step back. Forward, back. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have you guys give that a quick try, just for fun, we'll try a few reps. If you feel like you don't totally get it or the time isn't right, that's okay, we'll cover it more in future classes. So we'll just give it a try with maybe five reps. Okay, each side. So go ahead and start with your bell up here. Ready, set, and go. You're going to circle that bell a few times. When you feel ready, as the bell comes here, okay, as it comes across or from, from front to back, you're going to step forward. Okay, step, meet me here, circle it a few times, and then as the bell moves back to front, you step to that starting position, okay? Forward, back. Give it a few tries here. Forward, feel free to go at your own pace. Back. Forward, back. Forward, Back. And what that's eventually going to look like is we'll do it faster. We'll go forward, back. Forward, back. Forward, back. Okay, so go ahead and bring your belt up. Okay, we'll reverse direction. Do a few reps stepping with your other leg. Okay, ready, set, and go. 
Bell's circling in that other direction. Forward. Pause there as long as you need. Back. Forward. Back. Forward. Back. Go one more. Forward. Back. Nice work. Again, if it don't, didn't totally make sense that first time, that's okay. She's giving you a little bit of a taste. You can practice it on your own. We'll have it come up again in, in future classes. So we're going to run through our cool down now. We're, as I mentioned before, we're going to use our pelvic tilts to help us cool down. And then we're going to move into a little bit of nasal belly breathing to finish up. So start in your narrow square position. Let's do our pelvic tilts here, a little bend in the knees, and you're going to just go ahead and tilt your pelvis. We're going to go 10 reps, nice and slow. And I want you to already just start slowing your breathing down, breathing in and out through your nose. Nice, slow and smooth movement here. Check in with your body, see how it's feeling after finishing your first kettlebell solo class. Good. Let's move into our neutral square about hip width apart and go ahead and do 10 pelvic tilts there. Breathing in and out through the nose. Feel free to close your eyes. Tune into your body. One last set of pelvic tilts, wide square, so wider than hip width apart. A little bend in those knees. Last set of tilts here. Breathing in and out through the nose. Five. Six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, and relax. Okay, last thing we're going to do, you can set your bell aside. We're going to do some nasal belly breathing. So it's exactly what it sounds like. You're going to breathe in and out through your nose, and you're going to really think about letting your belly expand as you inhale and deflate as you exhale. So we're gonna do it for five minutes. Okay, so it's gonna be um, a little bit of a practice of just trying to keep yourself focused on your breath. If it feels like a long time and you're getting a little bit anxious or, or ready to go, just try to tune yourself back into listening to your breath or listening to your heartbeat and just really letting your body relax. So this is a really great way to just decompress after the workout you just did and get your body back to a relaxed state so you can recover more quickly for your next workout. You can just feel more centered moving forward into your day. So I'm gonna grab my phone for a timer. Then I'm gonna have you guys find a comfortable spot to lay down on the floor. And we're gonna go five minutes, like I mentioned. So I'm gonna set my timer. You guys don't worry about it. I'll let you know when we're at five. I'm gonna lay on your back, close your eyes. Nice big inhale, letting your belly inflate and nice big exhale, letting your belly deflate. Okay, so we're gonna do that together now. Close your eyes, relax. Feel free to place your hands on your belly so you can feel that expansion with your inhale.
All right, go ahead and slowly come back up to a seated position. You guys are done. Just want to thank you so much for attending and joining class with me today. I have a lot more to share with you guys about kettlebell solo, and we'll be progressing the workouts as we move along in the coming weeks. So hope to see you guys soon. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to email me. Have a wonderful rest of your day.